In order to answer the question of is, what, is commute mode related to neighborhood type, we're going to compute a chi-squared statistic. In this case, we are now iterating through a double sum. So basically what we are doing is we're going to iterate first for each row, we are going to iterate across each column. So for each row, we're going to sum across each column. And then, for, and then we're going to go to the second, so we start off with the first row and sum across the three columns. And then we go to the second row and sum across these three columns. So essentially, all of this is saying that we are going to sum over all of the cells in the inside of this table. So this cell is i equals 1 and j equals 1. This cell over here is i equals 2, because we're in row 2, and j equals 3, because we're in the third column. So all we're going to do is, for each of these cells, we're going to take the squared difference between the observed frequency and the expected frequency. And in this case, the expected frequency is this, which is just the row sum times the column sum over n. This is the expected frequency of a cell under the null hypothesis under the null hypothesis that the two variables are independent. So what this is saying is, if neighborhood type is n unrelated at all to commute mode, then we would expect to see ri times cj over n in each of these internal cells. What that means is the amount of people we expect to see in this cell is just a function of this, which is R1, the total number of inner city people, and the function of C1, the total number of walkers. Okay, But there shouldn't be any relationship between neighborhood type and commute mode. And in order to embody that independence, we're going to use this formula for the expected value. So once we've plugged in the expected value into the sum, we're going to have a chi-squared statistic. And that chi-squared statistic is going to have r minus 1 times c minus 1 degrees of freedom, where um, r is the total number of rows, and c is the total number of columns. So in this case, we've got two rows and three columns. So we're going to have 1 times 2 equals 2 degrees of freedom. So let's compute the test. The first thing that we need to do is compute the expected frequencies. So in our first example, we are going to have R1, which is 122, times 40, divided by N, 345. So we took row 1 times C1 divided by N. That equals 14.14. Let's fill out this box over here. We've got row 2 and column 3. So we've got 223 times 195 over 345. And that equals 126.4. I'll just fill in the other ones quickly. 38.9, 68.9. 71.10, and 25.86. So all we've done is applied that formula to each of the cells in our table. And now we need to calculate the chi-squared statistic. So we're going to have 14, sorry, the first cell, basically what we're going to do is take the difference between this value and this value. That's OIJ minus EIJ, square it, and divided by EIJ. So we've got 30 minus 14.14 squared over 
plus 16 minus 38.9 squared over 38.9 plus 32 minus 68.96 squared over 68.96. So that was the first row of the table. Now we're going to add the second row of the table. Plus 50 minus 71.1 squared over 71.1 plus, ooh, I skipped something, I'm sorry. Uh, 10 minus 25.86 squared over 25.86. And then the, the last column in the last row, 163 minus 126.04 squared over 126.04. So we are going to um, do all of the calculations and find that this gives us a chi-squared of 75.85. Recall that the degrees of freedom that we had was r minus 1 times c minus 1, which is 2 minus 1, 2 rows, so 1 times 3 minus 1 times 2, so equals 2 degrees of freedom. So let's go to our table of probabilities. I'm going to zoom out here to find them. So we have two degrees of freedom, and our chi-squared value was way down here at 75. What does this subscript say here? The missing entries in the top right-hand corner, so these are those missing entries over here, have p-values greater than 20%, so insignificant p-values, and all other missing entries give p-values of less than half a percent. So all of these entries over here have p less than 0 0.005. And therefore, with two degrees of freedom, our chi-squared statistic of 75 and change has a p-value of much less than half a percent. And therefore, we are going to reject the null, st the null hypothesis. So in our final analysis over here, we see that the p-value of 75.8 is less than 0.5% and therefore reject the null. The p, the p is low, so the null must go.